After I'd completed my first design of the solar air heater, the task at hand was sourcing the necessary material to build the unit. It quickly became apparent that everything centers around the availability of glass or plexiglass. Glass isn't too much of a problem, as you can get it cut to any dimensions. Talking with a local glass supplier, it would cost about $110 to cover my original 28-inch by 74-inch design in 3mm glass. He also shared with me that the plexiglass is almost twice the price. Looking online at Home Depot, I found that fact not necessarily true. I came across a piece of 2mm plexiglass for $40 less. The stock dimensions were a little different, as it came in at 30 inches by 60 inches instead of 28 inches by 74 inches. A quick change in the design would accommodate the stock dimensions and require no cutting. Essentially, all I had to do was switch from 10 columns of 13 cans, or 130 cans, to 11 columns of 12 cans, or 132 cans. The plexiglass will completely cover the heat chamber, but will no longer cover the 5-inch intake and exhaust manifold areas at the bottom and top of the unit. That's fine. I'll seal that portion with either a piece of half-inch treated plywood, depicted here, or a separate small piece of glass. Overall, I ended up with a shorter, wider unit, now 69 inches tall and 30 and a half inches wide. This required a slight repositioning of the heat sensor snap switch. The only other changes I have made to the design, not depicted here, are the addition of an override inline switch to shut the unit off during summer months, and an inline extractor fan vent backdraft shutter to prevent cold air from entering the building through the heat chamber's intake vent when the unit is not running. Enough planning, time to do some building. Solar air heaters require a significant number of pop cans, ideally cans without any dents. It is necessary to thoroughly clean the cans, but first you need to remove the pop can's top. Having just completed a few hundred of these, I suggest doing this as you collect the cans, not when you have a large pile, as the task quickly becomes tedious. I used the dishwasher to clean them, it was easy, and then set them out to dry completely. Back in 2010, Mr. Energy Free completed some detailed analysis of nine different designs affecting airflow in the interior of the heat chamber of solar air heaters. His goal was to determine the best design to produce the most heat. One of his most dramatic findings was the inefficiencies of using an aluminum downspout in replace of an aluminum pop can. Although it is a lot less work to build a solar air heater using commonly available aluminum downspouts purchased at your local hardware, not only is it more environmentally friendly to use empty pop cans, it turns out they produce significantly more heat. In side-by-side -side tests, while the pop cans were producing 100 degrees Fahrenheit, the aluminum downspouts were producing just 87. Not only was the material of choice important, but even the opening in the cans play a role. Three different designs tied for top place, and the easiest one to produce is the very simple four-punctured hole unit. Time to make some tools. I purchased four 10 inch nails at Home Depot. Using a grinder, I brought their points to a razor sharp edge. I did this to reduce the chance of deforming the pop can while puncturing with the holes. I then manufactured a simple jig to facilitate the puncturing of four holes all at the same time to save time. After all, I have 528 holes to punch just for one solar air heater. I also wanted to further reduce the stress on the cans by punching each hole in the can in a series, not all at once. Now, while working on this design, I stopped temporarily to test punch a few holes. It turns out I can do all four at once with no damage to the cans. 
With no need to over-engineer the problem, I stopped there and scrapped my design that would punch holes in a series. I did find that the cans are very delicate and light and somewhat difficult to hold in place while you're trying to punch holes in them. Time to go online and look for some sort of pipe to slide the can into to provide some stability and support while making the holes. It turns out, without custom ordering, there is no pipe on the market that has the inside diameter of 66 millimeters, the diameter of a pop can. Close won't do. In order to support the pop can, it has to be exact. Time to make another tool. I quickly built a box out of scrap half-inch plywood, just larger than a pop can, but shorter. I then wrapped a full can, it must be full and unopened, in wax paper and filled the gaps with expanding foam insulation. I added a couple of clamps to ensure the expanding foam didn't blow my mold apart and set it aside to cure. The next morning I removed the can and the wax paper and cut the excess foam off and I was left with a perfect tool to support an empty pop can without deforming the sides. This greatly simplified the process. After completing the holes in the can, which was a quick job, I built an assembly tray to stack the cans. I used two baseboards left over from a basement job, glued and brad nailed to make a V. I then assembled my first row of cans using PL adhesive designed for aluminum. Stay tuned, more to come.